right, everybody. Welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife. Now we're beginning our journey driving down to South Texas on the hunt for one of the rarest dynastids in Texas. Now this is one of my all time favorite Texas beetle species, if not my absolute favorite. And they are really only active for a few select weeks of the year. Now as you can kind of see behind me, it's really overcast, it's kind of drizzling, there's been a lot of moisture. And we're really hoping that this is gonna create perfect conditions for this specific type of beetle. Now we're really hoping for a plethora of males and females and fingers crossed we get them because they are some of the best and rarest beetles that you could find here in the great state. So we're gonna set up a light trap and we're just gonna sit back, relax, and freak out when we finally get the species we're looking for. Hopefully, 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 let's go. You fart, it smells like, ah, <laughs> save me. I did not fart. <laughs> Hello everyone. We have found a lovely place for our beautiful light trap and we are hoping to attract some of my favorite and rarest beetles to find in Texas. We're hoping to get many. The conditions are very, very perfect. However, this species of beetle is really only out for a few weeks every year. They have a very short lifespan as an adult, so it's gonna be a big trial of luck to get some of these beetles here in my hands, on my face, wherever. So, without further ado, we sit, we wait, we might look around, but fingers crossed, I get this very, very, very rare beetle. Let's go. All right, so we've been walking around for a few minutes. We haven't seen anything yet, but the sun is fully down. And uh, we're gonna check the sheet and hopefully we've got, you know, something to be excited about. So let's go, let's check it out. Um, I don't see that there's a lot. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, shoot. oh yeah, this is exactly what we're looking for. Take a look right here. This is a female Megasoma vodi, Texas elephant beetle. Look at these hairs on the underside here. Lovely, a lovely, lovely blonde. Look at that. Oh gosh, there's another one. Two females, no males yet. So the males and females are drastically different. These females are gonna be really dark. If we get a male, uh, they're gonna be kind of covered in a fine blondish hair on the tops of their body, not just on the bottom. But uh, actually listen. Do you hear that? That little <laughs> That is what we call stridulation. So what they're doing is they're rubbing their abdomen up against their wing coverings, their elytra. So they're like taking their butt and they're like torquing on the back of their elytra and it's making a <laughs> sound because it's that, those hard body parts rubbing together, but they're also coated in a little bit of fur. Now these look like super, super fresh females. Uh, which have just recently emerged with these perfect weather conditions and they are out to mate. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we get some males because they are super cool beetles and they look really, really awesome. Uh, the males, in my personal opinion, um, really showcase just how much these guys are related to the larger elephant beetles in Central and South America. But are these not the coolest little beetles? They are nice size. Um, not the biggest beetles we can get here in Texas, um, but definitely one of the contenders for the coolest species. Awesome. So we're going to let these guys chill on the sheet. Hopefully we get some more. And hopefully we get some males. Ah. Sharp tarsal claws. There we go. All right. Let's see. All right. So we looked around at some more mesquite. We didn't see any males. Um... I think I see some more beetles over on our sheet. So I'm really, really hoping that we have at least one male um, because they are so freaking cool. And I would really, really like to show you guys the male. So let's check it out here. Gosh, I can hardly see because I'm looking right into the light of the phone camera and I'm blind. Oh, oh let's see. Oh my gosh, 
Oh my gosh. So here's a female right here. Look how many females. First off, one, two, three, four. Oh, oh, oh. Guys, 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 guys. Look at this. Here is the male. Look at that beetle. See that little horn on the top of his nose and on his thorax? His pronotum. And then look at those beautiful, beautiful hairs there. Really, really nice beetle. But as you can see, look at the major differences between the males and the females. You'd almost think those don't even look like the same species, but they are. Oh, look at that beautiful male. Look at that, guys. That is the male Megasoma vodi. Now these are super, super spectacular. And as you can see, they have the same almost morphology as their larger cousins in Central and South America. Those three points on the thorax and then the little nasal horn. Look at his little horn, but he's so small. He's a tiny elephant. Look at that. Is that not the coolest little beetle? Now, what's really, really spectacular about these specific beetles is that Megasoma in general have a very short adult lifespan. A lot of times it's pretty common for these beetles to only live about one to two months on average in the wild. But what's even crazier is that their larva can spend up to two years developing into a larva large enough to metamorphize into an adult. Take a look at, again, the difference between that male and that female. Almost looks like two completely different animals, does it not? Now what these animals primarily feed on is saps. And so what they'll use is you can take a look, see those large spines on the front arms of these beetles? They'll actually use those for like shredding thin bark off of branches and licking up the sap. They primarily do that with mesquite trees and with a little tree down here called Palo Verde. But they are fantastic. They'll also eat fruit. Uh, most Megasoma will also opt to eat fruit as well. Um, you can feed them bananas in captivity. But they are medium-sized dynastid um, in the subfamily Dynastinae, so true rhinoceros beetles, and one of the rarest ones, if not the rarest, uh, dynastid to find in Texas. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful hairs. We'll see if we catch any more. Hopefully the answer is yes. All right, we'll throw these little guys back on here. Our sheet is very dirty. We've been looking for a few nights with our fruitless endeavors, but now we've got some really nice beetles to show for it. Look at that male once again. So cute, such a cutie. I'll give him a kiss. So cool. All right, fingers crossed we get more males. Okay, guys, look what just flew in. Oh, man. Number one, number two. Look at these male Megasoma Vodai. Are these not the coolest, cutest little elephant beetles ever? Look at that. I put one on my face. Oh, their spines are so sharp. Oh, 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 he's resting. He's resting. Now these guys are really, really special because they only really inhabit Little, these little mesquite forests in southern Texas and into Mexico. Oh, oh, oh. Um, but they are, they are the coolest little beetles. Um, this is very harsh habitat for rhinoceros beetles. They typically, when you typically find rhinoceros beetles, uh, ow. Ah, making my eyes water. Oh, yeah. When you typically find rhinoceros beetles, um, they nest in really, really fermented wood, typically in like wetter forests. So that's really interesting because we don't actually know 
where Megasoma vodi deposits its eggs and raises its larva. Um, now, we could guess. Um, I think it's pretty logical that they um, would nest at the base of mesquite trees and have their larvae live in the substrate, in the dirt, and feed on the root systems. And we've even found some um, larval casts, some poop, um, that would possibly verify that theory. However, without really finding any larva, we don't actually know. So these guys are kind of mysterious. They show up a few weeks out of the we year um, to just mate and um, die. <laughs> so they're really, really, uh, they, they have what they do figured out, um, but they can be very tricky to find and capture because of this very limited activity window. Um, but it's been really, really perfect conditions for them. So we've been able to find some more of these really, really cool beetles. Let me see if we've got any more females just hanging around. And I'll show you another, um, on my hand, a comparison. Let's find some females, shall we? Oh man, oh, there they are. Golly, running away. Come on, girls. What are you doing? What are you doing? Look at that. You can see how vastly different these animals are. This is again, this is called sexual dimorphism. This is when males and females look drastically different from one another. Oh, caught her on my shirt. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the reason is for these, uh, oh, sorry, for these particular um, beetles to look much different than one another. Um, typically in larger megasoma, um, you have the males exhibiting this horn in order to spur, uh, spar and fight over females. Um, but I don't know if that's necessarily the case with Megasoma vodi. They're pretty zen and chill for the most part. Um, I mean, they're really tearing into each other on my hand. They're very upset that they're right next to each other. They're going, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm not entirely sure why these look so different. Um, they obviously do, <laughs> again, the male, the female. As you can see, they're very active, very fresh beetles. <laughs> ah, she's crawling on him, uh oh buddy. Look at that. Hey, 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 hey. Easy, easy, easy. Easy, easy. But really, really cool beetles. This is exactly what we were here to find. We were super lucky to find some live ones. Uh, this is a holy grail species for collectors uh, because it's so hard to find. Not necessarily that it's uncommon within its range, but that its range is limited and the time of year that you can find them is also incredibly limited. You're really at the whim of nature based on how much rain you have, the temperature, the wind. Oh my gosh, we were thinking tonight was gonna be too windy to get any of these guys, but luckily we were wrong. Look at all these, so freaking cool. All right, so we came here, we found exactly what we were looking for, these beautiful elephant beetles. And now we're going to shut down the light. It's getting kind of late. These beetles, sadly, in the limited time that they are active, are usually only flying about and coming to the light for about an hour. Um, luckily, in this span of time, we have found two males and I think like 13 females. Um, so they are very, very, very healthy in this certain little pocket, this population, uh, which is really great to see because they rely primarily on some of these primary mesquite forests, these forests that have had 50 plus years of growth in them uh, in order to facilitate a healthy lifestyle. Um, so beetles in and of themselves are usually very, very good indicators of a healthy ecosystem, of a well-balanced um, environment, because they rely on so many different types of plants and not even that, but ages of plants as well. So if it's a really, really healthy forest, there better be beetles in it. But uh, we're gonna shut this down. We're gonna call it a night. We're gonna get some rest. But this is exactly what we were hoping to find. And this has been one of the coolest experiences ever. Um, this is my first time finding this species and this is probably my favorite Texas species of beetle. So thank you. Oh, I know he's hissing at me. <laughs> he didn't like me to kiss him, I'm sorry. But anyway, really, really cool. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. And if you're feeling very generous, 
share this, right? Aren't these cool? You, you want to see these, right? I know you're at home playing Animal Crossing, catching cool beetles. This is real life. Real life little elephant beetles. Don't you want to share this with the world? I think you do. So anyway, we had a good night. We're going to call it a night. And um, who knows? Maybe we'll have more adventures tomorrow. All right. Peace out.